ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಗುಂಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಗಂ ಗಣಪತೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಐಂ ಸರಸ್ವತ್ಯೈ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಗಣಾ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗುಂಹವಾಮಹೆ ಕವಿ ಕವೀನಾಂ ಉಪಮಶ್ರಭಸ್ತಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪತ ಆನಶೃಣ್ವನ್ ಓದಿಭಿಸ್ಸೀತ ಸಾಧನ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಮಃ ಶಿವಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಂದಮೂರ್ತ ನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಪಂಚಾಯ ಶಾಂತಾಯ ನಿರಾಲಂಬಾಯ ತೇಜಸಿ ಯಾತ್ಮೂತ ಗುರುಪ್ರಸಾದ ಅಹಂ ವಿಮುಕ್ತಸ್ಮಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ಬಂಧಾತ್ ಸರ್ವೋಪದಷ್ಟು ಶಿವಾನಂದಮೂರ್ತೆ ಮೃದ್ವಾಗ್ರಯುಗ್ಮ ಪ್ರಣದಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ದಯಾಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಾರ್ಥಬೋಧನಪಟು ಮಸ್ಕರೀಂದ್ರವರಂ ನೋಮಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಓಂ ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ದುಃಖಹರ್ತಾರ ಜ್ಞಾನದೂ ಭುವನ ಮುಕ್ತ ಶಿವಾನಂದ ಚಿದಾನಂದು ಆಶ್ರಯೇ ಗುರು ಸಪ್ತಮೋ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಾತ್ಮನ ಪ್ರಣತಸುಲಭಂ ಸಿದ್ಧವಿದ್ಯಾಪ್ರಭಾವ ಬಾಸ್ವದ್ರೂಪ ಸುಗುಣ ನಿಲಯ ಸ್ವಸ್ಥಕರ್ಮಾಧಿವರ್ಗ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾವೃತ್ತ ನಿಜ ಸಮದೃಶ ತಾರಧಂ ತ್ಯಾಗಿಪದ್ಯ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಈಶಂ ಮಮ ಗುರುಪದ ಶಿವಾನಂದಂ ನೋಸ್ಮಿ ಶಿವಾನಂದಂ ನೋಸ್ಮಿ ಓಂ ಅಖಂಡಾನಂದ ಸಂಬೋಧೋ ವಂದನಾತ್ಯ ಜಾಯತೆ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಪರಂ ತಮಹಂ ವಂದೇ ಚಿದಾನಂದ ತನುಂಗುದು ಓಂ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೆಲೆಬೆ ಪಪ್ಪ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಮಾತಾಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೆಬ ಮುಕ್ತಾನ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಟು ದಿ ಇನ್ವೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಪ್ಪ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅವೇರ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಸ್ಮೋಕ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಐ ಡೂ ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ಐ ಬೆಟರ್ ಐ ರಿಯಲಿ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೇ or you have brought in that such a nice way <laughs> anyway so beautiful actually <clears throat> so anyway as papa prompts me i will share some of the thoughts on the swadhyaya actually so it was a, a very good decision to have swadhyaya of papa's first book in quest of god in fact we are all devotees at some point of time there may be some vague desire in our mind i should have darshan of god usually i have i have this experience you know in temples especially in ashram we have got a temple there will be aarti so people will be standing in queues and when the aarti starts everybody will everyone will converge so somebody will come and say hey, hey, go, go 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 and when the aarti starts i used to see what they are doing when aarti is going on what the devotees will do i ask you the question they will close the eyes they will close the eyes and do like this 
Why should you stand in front there and close the eyes? I wonder actually. Many times I have asked, why do you rush and come there and push others and stand there and then close the eyes? <laughs> that you do not know. <laughs> so we close the eyes there. So when we close our eyes, we feel the presence of God. Although God is very much present there in the idol, we want to take him. We don't want to see him outside, you want to see him inside. Actually. That is why we close. We see him once and then we want to take him in. Don't be there, be here. We want to take him in. That is why we close the eyes. <coughs> so the God has got two aspects. One is, what? suppose someone asks, where is God? Then invariably all the religion will say that God is all-pervading, He is omnipresent, all-pervading. He is everywhere. If He is everywhere, why we don't see Him? If God is everywhere, then where is the need for a temple? And where, where is the need for any idol or anything? But we want something outside. God is all-pervading, but we are not able to behold God outside, actually. Without an idol, without some aid. That is, that is one aspect of God. The other aspect of God is, God is the indweller, the antaryami. All the religion will say he is antaryami. There is an English word, Emmanuel. The Bible they use that word, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with you. God with you. So everyone accepts God is with us, within us. And also God is without also. He is within and without. Because we are not able to behold him within, we are not able to behold him outside also. Once you know him, realize him within, then you will be able to see him wherever you see. Wherever you see, I see you. There is a Tamil song actually. Bharadiyar has written, Wherever I see, I see you, hey Krishna, he says. Probably some of you may be knowing this song. Kakai chiragi nile nandala la Udan kariya niram tondu dela nandala la So not in the feather of the bird, black one. When I see the blue or black color, I remember you, he says. So that reminds him of that. So once we behold him here, we can behold him outside also. Wherever we see, we could see him. That was Papa's experience and Papa wants us to have that experience, give that experience to us also. For that, this Swadhyaya is required. So one, we, we can read any number of scriptures. Bhagavad you can read, but you will not understand Bhagavad. The great Acharya, Bhagavan Shankaracharya, in his commentary on the Upanishads, he says, when the master speaks to you, or the scriptures say something, some people understand, some people misunderstand, some people understand it differently. All these are possible actually. Many times we will understand differently also. <coughs> In the academy we have Vedanta course and we later on when they complete the course we give them certificate. And <laughs> certificate Vedanta will be there. <laughs> so our Swami Puja Swami Krishnandi Maharaj used to give lectures. So in the later part of the many years, advanced age, he will not be able to come to the academy. So we take the students to his room. He will give a talk, 45 minutes sharp. And then when they 
after when they come back to the class, I will ask them one by one, as Swamiji asked now, what Krishna and Swamiji said. Many will be silent. They, can, they will not even remember one thing. And some people will remember something that is not relevant also. Especially Swami Chidanji Maharaj, when he speaks, he gives a big description about things. I was going there, like that he will say so many things and like a bombshell he will break something and go. That they will not remember, they will see all this. There, there Swamiji, when somebody gave him banana, that they will see. So on the banana he gave to some other person. Those things, Swamiji might have told, all those things they will remember, but they will not remember. This I personal experience also. Because when we read a scripture, the scripture has to bless us. Three kripas are required. One is the kripa of the shastra. The scripture should bless us. It should open us. And the Bhagavan's kripa is required. Bhagavan's kripa is required first. Bhagavan's kripa is always there. Then scripture's kripa is required. So in order to have the kripa of the scripture, only we do puja. We do puja to Bhagavad, we do puja to Ramayana. And uh, in all these scriptures, we do the kripa. And then we also do nyasa. This nyasa, you know, all the mantras, we do nyasa. All these things, the people will touch different parts. Then the, the puja, pancha puja, nyasa and all these things. So kripa of the Bhagavan is required. Kripan of the Shastra is required so that it will open up. The, it is in the, especially the Vedic mantras. They are made in a particular meter. That Vedic meter is called the Chandas. It is called Chandas. So before chanting the mantra, they do the prayer. They make a prayer to the Chandas. Chandas means that which protects. The mantra is protected by the chandas. It will not open to you, it will not open up itself, unless you are the right person. You are eligible to have that, then only it will open. So that is why there is a prayer to the chandas. Please bless me, please open up, please make me understand, let me understand this, help me, like that prayer is there. So, Kripa of the Shastra is required, Kripa of the Bhagavan is required. The third is Atma Kripa is required, your own Kripa. You should be really earnest in knowing that. If that earnestness is not there, then you will not understand. However much you read, you will not understand. The mothers used to take the children to temple. They all gone with the parents. Then they will go and they make prayer. Bhagavan, you being give that, give this, all these things. And they want us also to pray. When we were young and small children, we don't have any such need. Then, hey, then this one will do like this. He will not really make a prayer, do like this. But continuously they make you do like this. Afterwards, we also start to pray. Likewise, we have to, we have to keep, when Atma Kripa is required, that Atma Kripa will not be there. So, you know, if you keep on reading again and again, then one day the indwelling presence will open up. All right, this fellow is, at least mechanically is doing, all right, let me, let me show something. So, it will open up little, little. So, sometimes you will find when you keep on reading it, new things will come, flash up. Ideas will come actually, new ideas will come. Oh, this is this way. You keep on reading Bhagavad Gita, one day you will find a new idea that flashes. You keep on reading Bhagavad, Sunday, one day a new idea will flash. That is one of the reasons when different speak, people speak on the same subject. Suppose if someone is speaking on Bhagavad, one Bhagavad will say something, another Bhagavad will say in a different way. So we appeal, certain things will appeal to us also. So new ideas will come actually. So the Shastra opens up, the, you, you yourself also become little more opening up yourself. 
so that you will be able to understand it. So it is required also. So why I say this? Because Swamiji has specially made this, that Swadhyaya has, Mataji has already told 11 times, Swamiji has made it one year. And you continue this, continuously you keep on doing this. Papa's Kripa will be there. And your own Atma Kripa will also happen. The Shastra Kripa is already there. Papa's Kripa is already there. The Atma Kripa will come actually. So we should keep on reading this even after this function is over. You keep on reading it. So one day that Shastra will help us to understand our in real nature. So with this introduction I want to say some of the ideas which are not which you are not familiar with although you may be familiar with this subject some of the subjects you may be very familiar how it is put in the scriptures so those things i want to share actually for example many of you may be knowing the bhagavad bhagavad katha at least you have heard some people might have attended this Bhagavad Saptaha. Some others might have heard the stories. So in all these stories, there are interaction between two people. Or there are certain incidents is happening. So how the Kathagas explain? How you have understood? What is really there in the scripture? So that comparison I want to bring out. For example, you take the Bhagavad, Srimad Bhagavad is a widely read scripture. In all throughout India, wherever you go, you'll be there will be Bhagavad Sapta. Ramayana and Bhagavad are very common. Bhagavad Gita is also common, but not that much. Ramayana and Bhagavad are very common. So in the Bhagavad story, you know, Bhagavad starts with the story that uh, <coughs> Parikshit, there was a king called Parikshit. After the Mahabharata war, the Pandavas alone remained. After that, the next year, they passed on that rulership. Parikshit became the king, the emperor. After Pandavas, Parikshit became the emperor. That I think many of you know that. And he actually, at that time, the Kali Yuga came, so he fought with Kali and sent him out of his bounds. And then he ruled well. He was the emperor of the whole Bharata Varsha and he conquered Kali and he was a very good ruler, very good emperor. People were all happy. So he was ruling like that. And he, and one day, he had, he had, he went for hunting. This story is told because when Bhagavata, when, what is Bhagavata means? It is a conversation between Parikshit and Shukha Brahmarishi. So Parikshit was instructed by Shukha Brahmarishi. What made him to, why Parikshit went there? What made him, what made Shukha Brahmarishi to instruct him? The, the situation why it was learned, where it happened, all these questions are there. Then they say Parikshit was, the story was told, by, Bhagavad's story was told to Parikshit by Shukha Brahmarishi. Why he told, why he asked for it. Then they say Parikshit had a shapa. Parikshit was given a curse by, a shapa by one Brahmachari, one Brahmana Kumara, that you will die on the seventh day. Then they ask why the curse came. So then the story starts. Parishit was a great emperor and he, he conquered even Kali. And then later on one day, he went for uh, hunting. And then for hours together he was hunting, he became tired. And uh, he, was having, he was hungry and tired, feeling thirsty. And then he was looking for a place where he can get some little water or food. Then he saw a hermitage. Then he entered in. When he entered in, he saw someone is sitting and doing meditation. Then he was a king, an emperor. 
and nobody is there. He's asking whether anyone is there, whether anyone is there. He's asking. No one is responding. Someone is sitting and doing meditation. Naturally, you will become angry. But he, he's a king, you know. Even we expect that somebody should, when we go, somebody should come and receive us. And do this, or do, do, do namaskar. And if you don't do namaskar, he will look at you like this. <laughs> what type of fellow this fellow? <laughs> so he was thinking, naturally, he will expect that. So it's a little will be there. Not as much as we have. <laughs> we are also Maharaj. These things should not be put in the magazine. <laughs> so naturally, you see, like, Something, you know, it is innate in everyone that you expect that I should be respected. You should care for me. It is there in everyone. So naturally he expected that it is natural. And he's being an emperor. So nobody responded. Then he became a little angry. Then he saw there was a dead snake. He pulled it out and put it on his neck. And then in the anger, fit of anger, he went away. When, as he was going, then the anger subsided. Then he realized, I did something wrong. I should not have done that. He was feeling sad about it. By that time, this, the Rishi's son, who was playing and he was taking bath, something like that, he heard that the King Parikshit has insulted his father. So he became angry. So he gave a shapa. He said, he will die on the seventh day. Seventh day, the king will die for this Mahadadikrama, for having done this injustice. He will die on the seventh day. His shapa was given. This much everybody knows. What is really said in the Bhagavad I want to share with you. Some people have told me, I have heard some people saying, you see, those days, even the young Brahmacharis had this power, Mantra Shakti was there. They were able to give Shapa that you will die on the seventh day. Like that Mantra Shakti can be used for Shapa, that say projected like that. I used to hear like that. I have also appreciated at some point of time. Yes, yes, that's correct. Mantra has got that powers. But how it is put in the Bhagavad Gita, keep on reading the Bhagavad then we find something else is there. So what, how that Rishi thought about it? How Vyasa Bhagavan has looked into that, the different angles. It is true that the boy was capable of giving a shapa to the king that you will die on the seventh day. It is true also. This Brahmachari, saying boy, he had that powers to give a shapa to the king Parikshit, who is a great devotee, who was even protected by Bhagwan when, when he was about to be killed by the Brahmastra when he was in the womb of the mother. Then Bhagwan entered into the womb of the mother and protected him. That Parikshit got a shapa from a boy, small boy, who said that you will die on the seventh day. So both the truths are there. There is one aspect is, Parikshit was protected by Bhagavan. He saw him. He is really a Garbha One while, while he was in the womb of the mother, he saw Bhagavan enters into the womb. And the Brahmastra was about to kill him. That Bhagavan removed that fear from him. He stopped his death. The Brahmastra could not do anything. He... he sent it back and protected him. So that Parikshit was given a shapa by this boy that you will die on the seventh day and Bhagavan did not stop it. Probably he is not capable of doing it also. We do not know because Bhagavan in some other place says, Aham Bhakta Paradina Aswadantra I cannot change the words of that Bhaktas because what they have said that will become true. When a devotee, who is a great devotee of Bhagavan, he says it will happen like that. It will happen, even if there is distinct other way, it will happen. Many times it has happened like that. 
because they, those who are observing truth, they speak truth and truth alone. Whatever they say, they will become true. Satya Pratishtayam Kriyapala Ashrayatvam. If you are established, if you speak truth alone, if you say it will become true. If it is morning, if I say it should become morning. So if those words even Bhagavan cannot change. So that is true. That is one aspect. That may not be useful to us. There is some other thing which is very useful to us. That will strike if the Atma Kripa is there. The Shastra Kripa is already there. Shastra already reveals these things. But you are not accepting that. You are not able to look into that. Your eyes doesn't go there. You are not able to cognize it. You are not accepting it. You just skip over that. So those things I want to share with you. So the story aspect, you know, now this, this boy gave a shapa that he will die on the seventh day. Then he goes back and then Marcia is in meditation. This boy goes back. He saw the snake on the father's neck. He did not remove it. He started crying. He kept on crying. When he was keep on crying, that sound disturbed the father. He opened his eyes and he saw a snake, he removed it. And then asked me, why you are crying? What made you to weep? What is the matter? He was asking. He never, he did not care. He was not even aware that the snake was somebody might have put it. Those thoughts did not come in his mind. Something is there, he removed it and put it there. Then, what made you to weep? He was asking. Then the boy says, this look I will read and then kill you. Then the boy says, Father, Parikshit came here and he has put this snake on your neck like a mala. So I gave him the shapa. He will die on the seventh day. Then he was sad. Then he says, Nishamya Shaptam Adadar Shumbarendram Sabrahmano Natma Jamapyanam Dadu Ahobadam Ho Magadaknya Dekrataham Alpi Yasidroha Urdamo Dritaham. He says, You have given a curse, a sharper to him. He doesn't deserve it. But it, he, he does not deserve a sharper from us, my boy. My dear son. He does not deserve this punishment. Other than him means he does, he's not arisha for this. He's not eligible for this shaba. He is not, you should not have given. He, de, he does not say that you should not have given. He doesn't say that to him. He is not eligible for this shaba. He should not have been cursed. And he was not happy with the action of his son. He was not happy with the action of his son. He said, the king does not deserve this from us. He did a small thing. For that, you have given a big punishment. He, is, he did a small mistake. For that, such a huge punishment, he doesn't deserve, my dear. What have you done? He doesn't deserve this. How can you do like that? He did not say like that. He doesn't deserve it. We will say, what nonsense you have done? He did not say like that. The words are very important. I would have said, what nonsense you have done? This is the way to do it. He says, he does not deserve this actually. Then he says, he is a great king. He is a great emperor. The duty of the emperor is to maintain law and order. He protects all of us. But if you make a, you give a punishment to a person, that man is responsible for the welfare of all people here. You have given punishment to him. It is not a punishment to an ordinary person. In fact, you have punished the whole society because he was ably handling this country. He is maintaining law and order. Because of him, we are living safe here. We don't bother about anything. 
we are sitting quiet here and doing all meditation and other things because somebody is taking care of all of us. All of us. So ashram, we are staying here. Ashram is taking care of us. Because ashram is taking care of us, we are able to do it. If ashram is not taking care of it, what will happen? So like that, the king is taking care of the whole society and taking care of all these, those who are doing dharma, dharma padipalana, those who are doing this <coughs> spiritual practices, they are being protected by the king. So you have not only inflict inflicted a pain on him, you are, Shapa has indirectly affected the whole community. Actually. Then he says, that is one aspect. Second is, Saksan Maha Bhagavato Rajarshir Hayame Gayat Chutrut Samayuto Dino Naivatsya Naivasmatsya Bamarkati. And he's a great devotee, Maha Bhagavata. Bhagavata. And he's a Rajarshi. He has done Ashwamedha Yagas. Such a great people, when, when great people are there, somehow, sometimes, if something, you find something wrong in them, then we have to consider number of times, how can he make such a mistake? He's not an ordinary person. They know very well. So something, if it, if it appears in our eyes that he has done something wrong, whether it is wrong or right, we have to examine ourselves because you are much more intelligent, you know the, the dharma much more than me, then you will not make that mistake. It is my misunderstanding, it can be my our misunderstanding. So he was a great Rishi, a Bhagavata, who has done Ashwamedha Yaga. So, because of Chuta and Pipasa, he was hungry and he was thirsty. In such a weak moment, he did a small mistake. For that, this type of Shapa, he doesn't deserve. I don't think this is right. Like that he told. And then, then you know, he did not scold his son. That's where you find Papa also here. And then he makes a prayer to Bhagavad. Apapeshu, Stavrityeshu, Balena, Apakva Buddhinam, Papam Kritam Tat Bhagavan, Sarvatma, Chandumar Radhim. Apapi, this, my son, who is a Bala, who is a small boy, and is intellect is not mature enough mature enough to think so because of his immaturity and because of his tender age he made a mistake he, he gave a shapa to a person who is not at all done any, he has not done any sin parishit has not done anything wrong so apapi papa rehitaha parishit has not done anything wrong on him he gave this shapa my son has gave this shapa he is, a, is, is, it is because of his immaturity and tender age. So Bhagavan may kindly forgive him. Bhagavan, forgive my son for having given this shapa, he says. He did not appreciate the shapa, but he requested, he prayed to Bhagavan to condone that papa from his son. Although he can change it also, he can change that, no. Parish will not die, you can say that. It will, it will go, it will pass. But maybe it is the will of God. So whatever happens, it is Ram is doing. So that, it is not anything of my own. This is what I read from this, okay? Then he says, what should be our attitude as spiritual seekers? What should be our attitude when we interact with people? Sometimes some people, some people will glorify you. You are a wonderful person. Some fellow will say you are a stupid fellow. And they may do something worse also. So in such a situations, what should be our attitude? What should be the attitude of a devotee? Ordinary people we are not discussing. We are discussing of people who claims to 
that they are devotees of Bhagavan, who say that we are spiritual seekers, or who wants to lead the path of spirituality, such people, what exactly they have to do is given in this sloka. Tiraskrita vipralapta shapta kshipta hatapi nasyadat pradigurvandi tatbhakta prabhavobihi tatbhakta ha, those devotees of Bhagavan, even if they can, if they are, if they have the might to, if they have the capacity to change that, they will not do anything. What is that? Tiraskrita, sometimes people ignore us. Sometimes they will not only ignore, they will even criticize you. They will do some damage to you. They will curse you. They will say bad about you. And sometimes they give you curse. Sometimes they harm you also, in other way, physically or mentally. In all such situations, tiraskrita, vipralapta, shapta, kshipta, hata, abhiva, even if they kill, nasya tat pradikurvandi, they will not react to such things. If somebody does something wrong, somebody even harm us, they, those who are devotees of Bhagavan, they will not react to that. This you will find in Papa's journey throughout. People have ignored him. People have even <laughs> did something wrong, made him suffer physically, caused him go there, come here, go there, all commands and all these things. Whatever it is done, Papa accepted as Ram is doing it, Ram Das will obey. Because the other is always Ram for Papa. When you are interacting, when you are in this world interacting, you have to naturally interact with the, the world outside. Two ways of... Bhagavan is worship in two ways. One is you take the mind inward and the other is the mind goes outward. When you are interacting, when you are in the world, Bhagavan has two aspects. His omnipresent aspect. He is in the world, so you are interacting with the world outside. So sometimes Bhagavan will be very rough with you. Hmm? Always he need not be kind. Sometimes he will kick you. Then when he kicks you, oh, I'm very happy. Will you be able to say that? There are devotees who have said like that. Bhagavad it is there. So when someone ignore us, defame us, do something wrong, in all such situations, they won't react to any of these things. It is Ram's will. I accept it. It is not everybody's cake, actually. It's not everybody's cake. So that was actually Papa, actually. Throughout this journey into this inquest of God, you will find Papa has accepted whatever happened it is the will of Ram is happening. Damdas will obey. This has happened with many people. Whether it is Vivekananda, it has happened. Vivekananda Swamiji is there. Tapon Sri Maharaj, it has happened. We, we read certain portions which, is, <laughs> which, are, which appeals to us. There are other portions where Vivekananda Swamiji has been insulted by people. Papa has been insulted by people. Gurudev has been insulted pe by people. Gurudev was when he went to Shikesh. Those days, the traditional sadhus have insulted him. All others have insulted him. English-speaking sadhus, all these things they have told him. <laughs> Later on, they changed it. That's a different thing. So, Sukhabrahma Rishi Bhagavan, Vyasa Bhagavan says, Tiraskrita, Vipralipta, Shapta, Kshipta, Hatha, Viva. When you are ignored, when you are insulted, when you are ill-treated, in all such cases, they will not react. Absorb. It is what is called the titiksha. Titiksha in Sanskrit, it is called titiksha. Saganam sarva dukkanam apratikara purvakam chinta vilaparikitam. You will not even think about it. He has done like this, that thought will not be there. 
somebody has insulted me he has insulted me i endured it it's not there that is not even known actually ram want ram said like that oh it is it is in ninda is also become a part of their life actually nasya tat prakurvanti tat bhakta ha tat bhakta ha those who are devotees of god they should be like that so he did he given upadesha given to his son and to all of us also then he said iti putrakrta khena sonu tapto maha munihi swayam viprakruto rajna naiva naiva gam tad chintayate so this father he was feeling sorry about the action of his son although the wrong was done to him parikshit did wrong to him he never thought about it but he thought that my son has done something wrong to that person my son has done something wrong to parikshit so he was worried about that he never thought about what is what has been done to him then the concluding shloka of the 18th chapter of bhagavad is this, this first cha- first skanda of 18th chapter of bhagavad the concluding shloka is prayas sadhavo loke parayadvan deshu yojitah na vyadanti na krishyanti yata atma gunashrayah prayasah sadhavo loke sajjana the sadhus how they will behave how they should behave parehi dondeshu yojitah parehi mit others we are in the world we are interacting with other people when 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 you are interacting with other people they will make you they will put you in paths of opposites sometimes they make you happy sometimes they make you unhappy some people will make you happy some people will make you unhappy so the sukha and dukha even season sometimes it will be very cold sometimes it will be very hot sometimes it will rain so it rains dogs and cats we are worried about it we say oh, it rains so much if there is no rain no rain it is dry, going dry everywhere so not only human beings the animals human beings the trees the plants everything here even the gods the varuna vayu agni even sun sun is good sometimes sun is bad sometimes in the winter we are very happy with the sun in the summer we are not happy with the happy your own sun will make you happy and then happy the gods the trees everything will make you happy or unhappy the dwanda pass of opposites will be there our life is full of pass of opposites so everything outside us will make us happy or unhappy they make it in the, they place it in duality so in such a condition na vyathanti na krishyanti they will neither feel happy or unhappy happiness and unhappiness both are painful that is not peace actually in excitement happiness also can bring excitement and you have, can have a heart attack not only pain all last heart attack something <laughs> unimaginable you gain huh? <laughs> then also a heart attack so they are neither positive nor negative neither sukha trudukke samaye krutva labha labho jaya jeu so that samya bhava samya bhava that is equanimity that peace that shanti will always be there so they will not be carried away by this pain or pleasure they will not be carried away by the dwandas by the paths of opposites when you go through this papa's journey in all the descriptions papa has emphasized this point actually you will find that papa was not 
affected by area of the happening. Sometimes something good, sometimes something bad. He was not affected. He was maintaining that peace, calm, a state of calmness. That is why the, I, I do not know what I spoke last time. And when I said that when Papa was not uh, Vidvat Sanya, Vidvat, Vividisha Sanya. Vividisha means Vettumicha. A person desirous of knowing the ultimate, desirous of knowing the ultimate goal, taking to sannyas is called vividisha sannyas. We all belong to that actually. Vidvat sannyas means those who are already realized and then take to sannyas. In the Narada Bhakti Sutra also, there is a state. What is bhakti they define? Sa param, satvasmin parama prema rupa. The highest devotion is bhakti. And in that bhakti, sana kamyamana nirodharu patvatu. There, there is no desire. In that condition, no desire comes in the mind because nirodharu patvatu means the sanya selection. What do you want? Nothing. Everything is accomplished. Everything is accomplished. So that is the state of Papa. So, so when we are re interacting with the world outside, there will be, some will make us happy, unhappy. Different situations will be there. In such situation, to what extent we are able to maintain our equipoise, or able to maintain our mind calm, that is a sign of our spiritual strength. We don't get much involved in that. Maybe externally something, but internally we should be calm. So that is actually a strength of Bhagwan is there because Bhagwan is there. What is there to achieve? Nothing to achieve actually. So a devotee also, I will. Up to what time only I go? One sloka I will say and finish. <laughs> so in such a state actually, the mind should be calm actually. In both cases, and we are unaffected by that. So a child is there. A child, a very newborn baby, and then the mother gives, makes up, then it gives a bath and feed, and then it goes to sleep. And, then, and give a bath and nicely dress up and put the baby, very cute baby. So it looks at the baby, is very cute and very pleasant, having taken a bath and that is smiling. So the mother is very happy. Oh, you are a cute baby. And then she puts it in the cradle and that fellow sleeps. After some time he gets up. He gets up, he passes urine and passes one and two, everything. And mother was not there, so he is making, he's playing in that only. And then here I'll put everything here. And then mother comes here. You dirty fellow, he says. First he says, oh, you cute, he says. Now he says, you dirty fellow. In both conditions, that boys, Unaffected. Toy present name, Mama Kim Gunena. Toy up present name, Mama Kim Gunena. Recte, be recte, Mareva Dunam. There are taga kungkuma patra banga. The boy has got it. Yes, the beauty spot and other things. And very sweet and smiling and dirty. It makes no difference. To the mother, it makes no difference. To him also, it makes no difference. Likewise, in whatever be the situation, that mental boy should be there. That is what Papa wants from us. That is what his journey, his interaction with others is. What he, wa what he wants us to learn, that from his book, Hari Om Tatsat.